So now let's do another example, which would be an application of Hess's law for a, a little bit more complex of a case. In this case, we have 2MnO2 as a solid plus CO gas, giving us Mn2O3 as a solid plus CO2 gas. And if we look at each of these reactions here, we're going to see that the carbon monoxide and the carbon dioxide show up more than once. So let's first look at our reactants, which is MnO2. This MnO2 only shows up once throughout our entire reaction sequence, and it shows up here. So this is going to tell us that we're going to need two times reaction number one. If we also look at the Mn2O3, this also shows up just one time, and this shows up down here. But we have, in this case, a different amount of our Mn2O3, and it's on the other side of the reaction. So we need to take a third of this reaction, and we're also going to need to reverse it. Okay. So let's go in and let's take those two steps, because what we're going to see next is our CO shows up three times here, and our CO2 also shows up three times. So that's each of these are going to be dictated by how we manipulate the other reactions and what products we might have left. So let's take two times reaction number one, and that's going to give us two MnO2 as a solid, plus 2CO as a gas, giving us 2MnO as a solid, plus 2CO2 gas. And our delta H is going to equal 2 times negative 150.6 kilojoules. So if we then take a third and reverse the first reaction, that will give us two-thirds Mn3O4 as a solid plus a third CO2 as a gas, giving us one Mn2O3 as a solid plus one-third CO as a gas. This gives us a delta H equal to a third times positive 162.3 kilojoules. If we now add these two together, we're going to get 2 MnO2 solid plus 5 thirds CO plus 2 thirds MN3O4 giving us 2 MnO plus 5 thirds CO2 plus MN2O3 as a solid. And notice that since CO2 showed up on both sides of this reaction, they're going to cancel out to give us a 5 thirds over here on the product side. So here's our overall reaction, and we can get this by adding the negative 150.6 times 2 plus a third times uh, the 162.3 together. But this would give us the delta H for the reaction that I have listed here. And what we don't want in here is the MN3O4 and, and the MNO. So we need to use actually reaction number two. We're going to need to reverse it. 
So we'll reverse reaction two and we'll multiply that by two thirds. And when we do that, hopefully we can cancel out all our unwanted products and reactants. So when we do that, we get two MNO as a solid plus two thirds CO2 as a gas, giving us two thirds MN3O4 as a solid plus two thirds CO as a gas. This delta H is going to equal negative two thirds times negative 54.4 kilojoules. So when we add these reactions together, we're going to see that the two MNO solids cancel out on either side. We're also going to be able to get rid of the two thirds MN3O4. So this is going to give us 2 MnO2 as a solid plus 5 thirds CO as a gas plus 2 thirds CO2 as a gas giving 5 thirds CO2 as a gas plus Mn2O3 as a solid plus 2 thirds CO as a gas. So we can then rearrange these to give us two MnO2 as a solid, plus we have five thirds CO on the left, we have two thirds CO on the right, so that's gonna give us one CO as a gas. We have two thirds CO2 on the left, five thirds CO2 on the right, so that's gonna give us CO2 as a gas, plus MN2O3 as a solid. And this is exactly the reaction that we're looking for. So here we have to make sure that we calculate delta H properly. So that delta H is going to be 2 times negative 150.6 kilojoules because that's going to be 2 times reaction number 1 plus 1 third times positive 162.3 kilojoules because that's going to be reaction number three. We reverse it, which changes its sign, then multiply by a coefficient of one-third plus two-thirds times positive 54.4 kilojoules, which we take the second reaction, we reverse it, and multiply by two-thirds. When we do the math for all of this, we end up with negative 210.8 kilojoules and that's going to be the delta H for the reaction 2 MnO2 solid plus CO gas giving us MnO2 solid plus CO2 gas. And this is another application of how we can use Hess's law to figure out the delta H for a particular reaction.